nothing remains of the top two floors of this Mikolaev apartment block. Struck by a Russian missile, it would take weary emergency workers a day to remove the rubble and the bodies. In recent days, there have been more and more strikes on residential blocks and civilians. We're ready. We're ready to do our job. Take that, please. Three, four, and you must take some water, too. Volunteers hand out food and water to anyone in need. It's the third time this district has been struck, and solidarity is forthcoming for the newest victims of Russia's five-month-old invasion. They say on the news they're bombing neo-Nazis. Why can you see neo-Nazis here? There are just peaceful people here, elderly people who've stayed behind. How can anyone live like this here now? To the southwest, the situation is even worse. Caught in the fighting, small villages like Pribuzhia have seen most of their residents flee regular bombardments. Before the war, the population was probably around 1,350 people. But now, there are fewer than 2% left, about 30 people. The scariest thing over the past couple of days have been the silent moments. This week, they've been bombing us constantly. The area's other residents, the Ukrainian army, are all that stands between the Russians and Mikhailov. They've mined the territory and are using every weapon they can pull out of storage to hold fast. This maxim dates from 1944, and it shows. Watch out! Go the other way around. It only wants to fire one round. It doesn't work. Full stop. Our country is already using all the resources it has, all its strength. We are waiting for real and rapid help. Some of those weapons have now started to arrive, such as artillery from the West. And the Ukrainians are already eyeing a counter-offensive to retake Kherson to the southwest, occupied since March.